The cosine rule is uh, what we're going to look at in this video. So the cosine rule can be really useful. So either if you have B and C and you have the angle A in between them, then you can use the cosine rule in this form here to find the last side A. So that's really useful, uh, especially for triangles that aren't uh, right angled, because then if it was a right angle triangle, you could just use Pythagoras, but otherwise it's really hard to find this side A. Uh, so the cosine rule lets us find that side A, basically. Uh, otherwise, if we have, say, B, C, and A, so if we have all three of the sides, then we can use the, the cosine rule in this form. So that's just this one here rearranged uh, to look like this. Uh, you can use it to find the angle. So, yeah, so if you have all three sides, you can find all three angles just by doing this three times. Yeah. Um, this is in the tables book. This form isn't in the tables book, so you have to be able to rearrange it yourself to make it look like this. Okay. So I'm going to look at the proof in this video because you can be asked to uh, do the formal proof of the cosine rule in the exam. And then in the next few videos, we're going to look at some examples. So if you don't want to look at the proof right now, if you're uh, just going to go straight to the examples and you can skip this video, go to the next. Um, there'll be a link at the end of the video anyway, uh, kind of a box will pop up. But anyway, I'll go ahead with this proof. So I'm going to start with this triangle here. Du, 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 du. And we're going to drop H down. So I'll put that in as H. I'm going to put this angle in as angle A. That means this is going to be side A, because remember the opposite uh, side is always going to be, or the opposite uh, side is always going to be the same letter as the angle. This is going to be B, and this is going to be C, so the bottom side. Okay. So triangle ABC. Okay. Also, so see where we drop down this H? Well, one, it's going to be perpendicular, so that means it's going to be a right angle. But also, we're going to break up this little triangle that we're going to call this bit X. Okay. And if this entire thing is X, is, sorry, if this entire thing is C, and if this little bit is X, then this little bit here is C minus X. That will give us the length of this side. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, so that's how we started anyway. So you have to tr start with the triangle ABC. You have to drop the perpendicular H and you write X and you write C minus X in there. So the next step we're going to take uh, to prove it, I'll go to dark blue, is we're going to do Pythagoras twice. We're going to do Pythagoras in this triangle, and then we're going to do Pythagoras in this triangle here as well. Okay, so I'll start with the one on the left. Um, so Pythagoras is going to be B squared is equal to H squared plus X squared. Again, so B is going to be the hypotenuse here. H squared is this side of the triangle, and then X is this side of the triangle. Okay, so b squared is equal to h squared plus x squared. I'm going to rewrite that. Um, so it's b squared minus x squared is equal to h squared. Okay, so we want h squared on its own, and you'll see why. Um, then I'll go purple, and I'm going to do the same with this. So I'm going to do Pythagoras again. So this time it's going to be a squared is equal to h squared plus, it's going to be a little bit more tricky, c minus x squared. Okay, so that's going to be a squared is equal to h squared plus, so if we uh, multiply that out, it's going to be c squared minus 2cx plus x squared. And again, I'm going to rearrange this so we have h squared on its own. So it's going to be a squared minus c squared minus x squared plus 2cx is all equal to h squared squared. So moved all of this over to this side. We just left with h on uh, on this side here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let this h squared equal to h squared. So I'll go bright blue. I'm going to say oh, I'll go up a little bit. So I'm going to say h squared is equal to h squared. Okay, because it's the same thing. So that means that this has to be equal to this here. So I'm going to say b squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus c squared minus x squared plus 2cx. Okay, so again, this side is equal to this side here. Um, I'm going to rearrange that a little bit. So we're going to get rid of, so we'll go dark blue. We can cancel this minus x squared and this minus x squared because it's on both sides. Um, that's all we can do for now. So I'll go back to 
bright blue. And I'm going to leave a squared on this side. So it's going to be, I'm just going to rewrite this again. B squared is equal to a squared minus c squared plus 2cx. So that's b squared plus c squared minus 2cx is equal to a squared. I'm just going to re flip that around. So instead it's going to say a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2cx. Okay, so then the last little trick, we almost have the cosine rule. We're going to go back up to this triangle here. So this triangle here, this right angled one, and we're going to use cos of a. Okay, so cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to write that just here where you can see it at all. So cos of a is equal to adjacent, which is x over hypotenuse, which is b. Um, and then I'm going to multiply both sides by b. So that means b cos of a is equal to x. So the b will get rid of that, okay? So put a little box around that because that's going to be useful down here. Okay, so if we sub instead of x, we write b cos a because they're equal to each other. If we sub that into this formula here, we're going to find our answer. So our final answer then is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos of a. Box around it to finish. Okay, so that's our formal proof done. That's everything you're going to need to prove that in the leaving cert. And you have the two forms of it here. So make sure you know how to get from this top form to this bottom form. And the next video, we're going to look at some examples of how to use the cosine rule. Okay, uh, yeah, see you then.